Yes, do you know our ancestors manufactured a trap not meant to catch us, but now it has clamped shut so tight that billions wriggle within it with no escape. The truth is similar to how tokoloshis work. A tokolosh is a very powerful creature that lives in the fourth dimension but can perform physical work in the third dimension. It can be made and used by individuals. Tokoloshis work very well initially but eventually they turn against the owners and start killing their children. This is what has happened to us. Please teacher Rabbi L.M. Tumisulu of Marifado Development Organization Committee Brew Ethics, the Christian Bible and Africa. The way black people love Jesus, despite obvious erroneous contradictions and wrong interpretation, is really a tokolosh like work. For starters, just ask. Is the Bible an African book? Millions of Bantus who are Christians, Black Hebrews or Muslims who proclaim it as the word of God and claim an undying love for Jesus and their hatred of pagans then top up everything with a great Amen. Even highly educated scholars pause it that and they miss the crucial leverage that can be used to exit the trap. Is the, the Bible an African book? They say yes. But some questions you can use to hit them very hard are if Africans wrote the Bible, did they include the texts about their enslavement, colonization, war, the case of harm? Are black people the result of the case of harm? Go to this YouTube and understand where these cases added later or they are in the original book. Is God the creator? Does God love and hate parts of his creation? Did God create the devil? So what is the truth? Did the Africans write all that? Is it possible Africans wrote all this? Slavery in the Bible. Slaves can be bought and sold or inherited. Leviticus 25, 44, 46. You can sell your daughter into slavery. Exodus 21, 7. You can buy a female sex slave for yourself or your son. If you don't like her, you can sell her again, but not to foreigners, Exodus 21, 8. You can rape captive women, but you can't resell them in slavery, Deuteronomy 21, 10, 14. You will not get punished for killing your slave as long as he doesn't die immediately, Exodus 21. Slaves submit to their masters, even the masters who are harsh, 1 Peter 2, 18. Slaves must save their Christian masters better than other masters. 1 Timothy 6, 1. Slaves must please their masters in everything. Titus 2, 9. Was this written by Africans? The same Africans we say wrote the Bible. Christianity also says slaves must obey their masters like that. Some Africans are reading all this and witnessing the atrocious cruelty by Euro Christians then conclude that the Bible is a brainwashing tool of the colonizer are these africans correct when missionaries arrived the africans had the land and the missionaries had the bible they taught us how to pray with our eyes closed when we opened our eyes they the land was in their hands and africans have the bible ever since this was said by jomo kenyatta if our if our ancestral religion was and is powerful why are we being dominated today is it correct then that tokoloshis work well, but eventually they turn and start killing your own children? What did our ancestors do for us to deserve such punishment? If the Bible is an African history book, let us ask once more. How come we have never heard the whole Bible in some parts of Africa other than Ethiopia? At the same time, is there irrefutable evidence that indeed black people wrote the Bible. The shocking fact is this. The Bible was not translated from any old Hebrew texts. They can't be found. And it was written in Africa by Africans. What evidence is there that whoever wrote the Bible left some clues, some telling clues? Africa is the only continent named directly in the Bible in Genesis 2, 10 to 14. In Genesis 49, they are totems, and the popular song of Solomon, I am black and beautiful, stares us in the eyes. 
and also from beyond the rivers of Kush, my worshippers, my scattered people will bring me offerings. Such verses can never be written by an Asian, a Semite, or a Euro Gentile. This is impossible. So let's look at this book, The Africans Who Wrote the Bible, by Nana Panchi Dakwa, and they see some things there, and then we will need everything together into a tapestry that will clearly demonstrate some factors that have to do with a tokolosh. So, Nana Dagwa says, how could it have happened that Jews and Hebrews would write their religious documents and attribute them to authors with transposed African names? This is a tough question for everyone who is serious about African salvation. How could a supposedly different racial and ethnic group of people called Jews have supposedly written any document at all and assigned the author to an African? The answer is simple. And it is what I have already pointed out that the people that left ancient Egypt into the so-called biblical exodus were not Jews or Hebrews. They were black people from the black tribes of ancient Egypt these were the black tribes that later moved into inner Africa beyond the rivers of Ethiopia to become the Africans. The Jewish people were therefore originally Africans and specifically most of them were from the Akan tribe. I have pointed out that the Jewish scholars that compiled, edited and translated the biblical documents into Greek did not acquire these documents from Israel. These were documents that were written by Akan and other African tribal authors in ancient Egyptian religious archives or library. The Jewish scholars simply took these documents and transposed the original names of these authors into the Greek. This is how the authors of these documents acquired the African names. Let's prove that. Very critical. I would like to emphatically state that this is a fact. The names of the authors of the Old Testament and even New Testament can be found in the uh, Bible. Here are the places of the Bible, of the stories of the Bible, of the many rivers, the seven rivers, or, or that are connected and that connect to the river Nile. Some names like Jeremiah. There is also the book of Keremi, pronounced Kereme in the Old Testament. This is an indigenous Akan or African name which has simply transposed and orthographically changed but the phonetics still remain African. Zachariah is the book of Sekere in the Old Testament. In English phonology, this indigenous Akan name is pronounced as Sekere. In the initial transposition of this name, it became Sekeria. You know, Z and S trans can change each other. However, in English phonology, the alphabet S has a Z phonological property as in the pronunciation of C's and the resistance in foreign ears and other Zakaria comes S in Zakaria as Z. One interesting aspect of the pronouncing of this name is that most people pronounce it as Zakaria, but it has never been written with an A in the Bible. The, orthog the orthography of this name has retained the original E after the S Though the pronunciation is different, it was the indigenous Akan name Sekere that was transposed into Greek and other European tongues in Zachariah. The etymology of this name is not Hebrew. Obadiah is Obodia in the Old Testament. This is an African name. Joshua is Gias. This is an Af these are African names. And also Haggai is Agiei. And Hosea is Ose in the Old Testament. Ose is in Akan and therefore an African tribal name. Specifically, it is popular Asante name. And Samuel is also the book of Asamoa. These are all Africans. There are many. You can read this book and find all these names transposed there. So let's go to the name of the Creator. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Ehad. Adona is Aton. Comes from the Egyptian Aton or Aten. Adonai is the Hebrew. Adonis is the Greek. Danai is the African name for love. 
It's also a Shona name. It's also an Akan name. So Leviticus 23, 1 says, Adonai said to Moshe, O Munzizi, O Moshe, tell the people of Israel the designated times of Adonai, which you are to proclaim as holy convocation, are my designated times. Work is to be done on six days, but the seventh day is a Shabbat, complete rest, a holy convocation. You are not to do any kind of work. It is a Shabbat for Adonai. So there it is. It's quite clear. More proof that the Bible was written for the Greeks. Get this book by Alvin Boyd uh, Kuhn, The Lost Light and Interpretation of Ancient Scriptures. He says here, the outcome has been that the theology handed down to us by the early reformulators is the crudest least rational and intellectually most disconcerting rendition of the ancient revelation anywhere extant. Philo, Origen, Clement and Josephus had expressly declared that scripture shielded beneath the literal narrative a secret profundity of meaning which was its true message. Philo specified four distinct levels which the sense of scripture was to be apprehended the four levels of understanding the Bible. Literal, moral, allegorical, anagogical. Again, let's look at this by Amen Matra, The Roman Illusion, Volume 1, Created Exposed. The best of Ptolemy Sota 1, who started the whole scheme. Because these people didn't have a religion, an alphabet, or a philosophy. Ptolemy 1, just like a racist savage, Alexander the Greek tried to get himself accepted into ancient black hermetic society of priests. Ptolemy 1 was rejected. The same reasons of Alexander. What were the reasons? It is taboo on the priesthood and mysteries to allow anybody who was not an African. And so he forced himself, found the male Coptic Egyptians who allowed and started to manufacture the tokolosh that has become the snare that has trapped all of us. All of us. The taboo on priesthood and mysteries was that only Africans could be initiated. Any violation would rouse disasters. When the Melkite Coptic Africans in Egypt created Serapis, they breathed life into a system that acted and that acts exactly like a tokolosh uh, today. You can read from the Wikipedia about Serapis here who came from Osiris Apis, a Greek roman date. The cult of Serapis was introduced during the 3rd century BCE on the orders of Pharaoh Ptolemy Sota, one of the Ptolemaic kingdom, as a means to unify the Greeks and Egyptians in his realm. This was taboo, and this was the breaking of the commandments. So they took Osiris, Osari, Isis, Heru, and built Jesus, who is worshipped, by millions and they laughed by millions today. This is a fact. This is the real source of the Bible. You can see here the Septuagint. You see, when you read it, it says Yahweh was added later in blank spaces left by scribes. Right? You see there? So it was not there. What happened to black people? The Egyptians were the most advanced civilization on the planet. There was no structures on the earth like the pyramids found everywhere. So the Greeks infiltrated Egypt, conquered it, and the Alexander the Greek took it over. And Ptolemy Sota one crowned himself Pharaoh in 323 BCE. And so black people were massacred, destroyed, and sold into Arab slave trade. It then eventually went to America and to Africa was conquered. And the Council of Nicaea changed Serapis Christus into Jesus Christ. You, we know the history and the Greek and the Romans built their cities using the stolen knowledge of ancient Africans, which is why none of their famous structures existed before 323 BCE, before they conquered Egypt. So that's clear. So go to this meme and read and see for yourself about this tokolosh today, and you can see that. So our ancestors left clues and proofs. So is the Bible an African book? Yes and no. Yes, if you know your Afro identity is intertwined with your spirituality and uh, many of the things that we are going to show here now. Ptolemy 2 commissioned the creation of the first Bible written in Greek, which is the Stragent Bible, which is also known as the 
LXX, like this is 70, and the Greek Old Testament. The Septuagint derives its name from the Latin term Vesio Septuaginta Interpretum, which means translation of the seven interpreters. What were they interpreting? The world's first Bible was actually translated by a faction of black Coptic Egyptian traitors for the Greeks from the repository of diverse ancient papyri scrolls and spiritual texts that were confiscated from ancient Kemet used to build a library in Alexandria. So this is very clear. The first Bible or Septuagint was not translated from older Hebrew texts such as the Pentateuch, Torah or Masoretic texts. It is as has been taught by mainstream history. It is clear and it is obvious that something has happened. So the Africans indeed wrote the Bible. For they were the only race with the philosophy, the science, the mysteries, and the alphabet. When the Greco Romans invaded our civilization, they penetrated our mysteries and by force, guile and subtlety took over, re edited all the skeletal books into a Bible, added verses to suppress us and verses to support them. But they forgot to weed out the evidence and the proofs that we have already given. Today, we must be a wise nation. And use not the Torah or Bible as our base of spirituality, but follow the trail back to the source, our ancestral mysteries. In Acts 7.22, we read, And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and was mighty in ways and deeds. If Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, what did he learn? Mahari Fado Development Organization, join us at maharifado.com so that we can offer you the training in the things that Moses learned. Indeed, our ancestors created a tokolosh, but you can come out of that tokolosh easy. Subscribe to our channel, Kamiti Iburu Ethics. This is Prince Teacher Rabbi L.M. Tumisulu Tatenda. Thank you. Siabonga.